I have failed at school. I've struggled with weight since childhood. I've changed my career many times. I've had multiple panic attacks. I've been challenged with anxiety and depression. I've been burned by people I care about. I've had people close to me die. I've struggled with self-worth. I don't have being a parent figured out. I'm an old dad. My wife makes more money than me. My name is Scott Papik, and this is the Age is Your Edge podcast, named after the book that I wrote called Age is Your Edge, which is funny because I never thought I would ever in my entire life write a book. But it's funny when you start doing some inner work and you come down with the purpose and things start flowing and you start working in this whole new different lens, what can happen without expectations. And here we are. I'm talking about a book I wrote on a podcast about the book I wrote. And the thing that I care about the most is watching people excel in their own authentic way. The problem that I see is most people don't even see it within them. And I'm hoping that with the conversations with others or some thoughts of mine can help surface your talents, your gifts, your skills, what you're passionate about, what you dream about. It'd be amazing if you supported the book, Age is Your Edge. All the links will be in the podcast. And it would be awesome if you could subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend or two. Disclaimer, I am not a doctor and I don't play one in this book or this podcast. This is not a substitute for professional help. These are my thoughts, observations, and results of my research. There is no shame in seeking professional help, none. We live in a time where inspiration is abundant. Watch any sporting event and you will learn about an athlete who faced adversity while growing up, but didn't let it impede their goals. These are incredible stories. But what about the stories of individuals digging a hole their whole life searching for gold that isn't there? They just dig every day because they are on autopilot, fearful of change or don't know another way. I was digging such a hole for a long time and it sucked. Still, I wouldn't change my path or choices because they are part of my unique story. But digging and digging without knowing exactly why is lonely and miserable. For me, it was a vicious cycle without good outcomes. Over time, I eventually learned there is a light in every crack, and sometimes all I had to do to see it was to look up. I deeply care about how some people have achieved their dreams or mission in life. When it comes to my craft and passion, that's the space where I spend the most time. I'm always wondering, why didn't this person give up? How did they build the confidence to go for it? What was their internal framework? I believe those who keep climbing to be their best have a mixture of resilience, positive mindset, and a clear idea of their unique purpose. On the other side, I'm just as curious why others quit on their dreams and missions in life. Why do they keep digging if it doesn't serve them? What's going on to cause that? Why don't they trust themselves? From my experience, I believe there are five reasons. Not being clear on a life purpose, a lack of confidence, scared of what others think, don't know how to start, not having past success overcoming challenges for whatever reason. And what do I mean by that? When repeatedly attempting challenging mental or physical situations and eventually succeeding, we begin to believe in our capabilities. In contrast, if we fail repeatedly, we believe that we won't succeed, even if we try, so we give up. One of my favorite quotes by Thomas A. Edison is, many of life's failures are people who didn't realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Exploring our potential is an ongoing process throughout our entire lives. We have the choice to play the game or not. In my experience, there is no greater pain than knowing and then ignoring the need for improvement. If you are asking yourself the following questions, you are in good company. How did I get here? Is it too late for me? What do others think of me? What will others think if I start something new? What am I supposed to do now? Dedicating my career to media gave me an opportunity to ask intimate questions to all walks of life, males, females, athletes, artists, 
musicians, you name it. I have been in a room and I've interviewed them. And the one common thread is you have to fall in love with something. Each of our life plans are unique, just like our fingerprints. My hope is that you read something that strikes a nerve and then that nerve transforms into a thought, then curiosity and an action. The theme throughout the podcast and the book will be around climbing mountains because it's a metaphor that I use for life and teaching. Climbing mountains will test you and strengthen your mind. It, te it teaches you patience, persistence, presence, and gratitude. Keep climbing is my mantra, so you will hear that quite often. So the book is broken down in four different main chapters and then the sub chapters, I'll go through them. The, you know, the, the main chapter of part one is age is your edge principles. You have to care more to be more. We talk about the keep climbing mindset, growth versus fixed mindset, how to cultivate a beginner's mindset, self discovery is creativity, how you have to ask questions or you're never going to get the answers. We're going to talk about my guy, Commander Jack Riggins. We're going to talk confidence versus courage. We're going to talk how fear is fake, tension and exit, becoming comfortable in the uncomfortable, how to surrender your ego, perfectionism is fake, choose your journey, not others, and how to sit in your shit. Part two are the four pillars of care. The first pillar is clarity. And that's designing your purpose, explore your passion, explore your dreams, discover your strengths, discover your core values, explore your service, who inspires you, how to reveal your purpose, how to articulate and communicate your purpose. And then we go into the second pillar of care, which is acceptance. What are the reality of your circumstances, body image? The third, Im the third pillar of care is resilience. The fourth pillar of care expressiveness. And then we're going to work the plan that we built. We're going to talk about mentors. We're going to give yourself permission to go live out your dream. And we're going to learn to focus because that is a very important skill you're going to need to stay on track. And then the mental training for success in midlife, mindset training, smart goal setting, self-talk, arousal control, visualization. We'll talk about the keep climbing journal and then we'll have some final thoughts. But the one chapter that I've already gotten a lot of feedback on, becoming comfortable in the uncomfortable. And getting uncomfortable is not being dangerous. It could be as simple as taking a 30 second cold shower, fasting for 24 hours, taking a walk in the rain, just doing something that you're like, otherwise would not do it. The way to master discomfort is to do it comfortably and often. Progress begins when you ignore the voice in your head that says stop. When we become confident being uncomfortable through repetition, we begin to look forward to challenges instead of avoiding them. We need challenges to be our best. Practice pressure situations. And we need to start now and get in front of the stress before it happens because eventually we're gonna go through some stressful times. Use this practice as an opportunity to train and develop and grow. Do it daily. Start small, be present, and be aware of what's going on once you begin to get uncomfortable. Training uncomfortable is an opportunity to strengthen confidence and build resilience. Remember, the pain of being uncomfortable is only temporary. All right. Thank you for being here. I would be honored if you would support the book. It would be incredible. And I will put the links in the show notes below, but you can get it on Amazon or you can get it at my website at scottpapik.com. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a journal, the Keep Climbing Mindset journal that is kind of the companion to the Age is Your Edge podcast. I'd be honored if you pick that up and start doing some daily work. It's definitely the routine that I use. And I'd be honored if you'd, if you'd uh, pick, pick those up and Man, just share the word. I'm just trying to help people and let people know that are feeling really stuck in midlife. Like, man, there's, it's not over. We got a long way to go. Appreciate you being here. We'll talk soon.